Welcome back everybody to my channel and today we are starting a brand new series on this channel a dynasty mode NCAA 14 with the Kansas Jayhawks now choosing a team was difficult early on in this process I wanted a team that was bad but was already in a decent conference and somebody that um, had shown some life this season at least a little bit I mean they just beat Texas uh, Saturday night but as far as their overall talent goes, I didn't want a team that had a lot of talent on there. And Kansas just fit the mold perfectly. They're a low overall. They're already in the Big 12. And I just felt like it'd be really fun to build them up and see if we can make them a Big 12 powerhouse. Obviously, um, they've always been known as a basketball school. And I think as Belak Schmeems, the head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks, we can finally get this football program going in the right direction. I can just take this off. And that's what really pushed me towards choosing Kansas as the team for this series. I narrowed it down to three schools, Duke, Vanderbilt, and Kansas. And ultimately, the other two teams just had more talent on their roster compared to Kansas. And I felt like it would make more sense to start out with a team as um, low as Kansas has been the last couple of seasons. And looking at these records, since the year 2000, they've only had three winning seasons. One of those is 7-5, and five, another is 8-5, and five, and one is 12-1. and one. And now, as we all know, that is the... A miracle year where they almost I mean almost like extremely close they almost made the national championship this year that year back in 2007 that would have been crazy to see um, too bad it didn't happen but as you can tell their success did not sustain and this isn't even counting from 2013 on because the records aren't in this game yet because they hadn't happened at the time so I think it's time we sign that contract and we go and we get this series started as you can see, we are brand new level one head coach, Belak Schmeems. I always go into the scouting department first because that's the more um, valuable place to invest your points in. And I'm going to just do carrying and um, plus four to power moves for the OC and the defensive coordinator. Nothing too important there, just the first little upgrades. Now, as far as recruiting goes in this series, I'm going to do that mostly off screen. I think every two episodes, so I'm going to go week one and then week two, and then at the end of maybe that week two episode, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a recruiting um, like a, um, update, see, show you guys how things are going. So I don't, I know that can get very boring, but if there's any like big news like, hey, there's a five star that wants to come here, you guys will definitely see that going further into the series. Um, red shirt players is the first thing we're going to jump into. I really love to just, if you're not going to play guys, you might as well red shirt them. Like these two guys at the bottom of the roster, they're going to need to be red shirt. Um, and then guys like, I believe Daniel Hishaw is how you say it, Hishaw Jr. is going to be injured this year. So we won't be red shirting Devin Neal because he could get some playing time. Um, of course, Puka Williams grad. Well, yeah, graduated and was drafted last year, so they no longer have the superstar running back in him. Um, I believe he is on the Bengals at wide receiver now, if I remember correctly. Um, so we're just going to go through the roster real quick. Redshirt any of the lower overall players. I'll leave those guys right there, and I'll get right back to you guys. All right, not too many players there to redshirt on this team. A lot of upperclassmen, and I'm not going to do anything cheating like choosing the extra pipeline state Let's go ahead and get our schedule set for the year. We're going to open on a bye week. I don't really like that. I would rather have um, this week right here be our bye week before we get into conference play. And let's see if we can go ahead and reschedule that game um, Yeah, here in week one. So coming into week one, we're going to start at Charlotte 49ers. They have a solid program over there. You would think that would be an easy win for the Jayhawks, but... Nothing's going to be easy except for maybe this game against FCS Midwest, the Kodiaks. Um, we got a game against Rice there in week three at Rice. I have no idea where Rice is even at. Then Louisiana Tech comes to Kansas to play us. We take that bye week. Then conference play comes around. Texas Tech, T 
TCU and Oklahoma at home is a big advantage there. Then we go to Texas, Oklahoma State at home, West Virginia away, and Iowa State away. And BYU I didn't bring into the conference. Now, I don't have any of the revamp tools, so I'm not going to be doing the um, Texas and Oklahoma change over to the SEC because that just leaves a big gaping hole in the Big 12 because there's not enough teams in this game to really fill that hole. And I didn't want to have to deal with realigning all the conferences. But as far as putting teams into conferences, I did put the um, BYU Cougars into the Big 12 just to see what they do. Because I don't like having independent teams, so I put like Army and Navy went into the American Conference, stuff like that. The only independent team is now Notre Dame because they have to be independent because you can only you have to have one person in the independent conference. You can't get rid of it completely. Um, so yeah, I think this is a solid schedule for us. If I'm being realistic, we could win our first three. I think Louisiana Tech probably takes one from us. Um, but I wouldn't bet against Charlotte taking one or Rice taking one from us. Um, those would be interesting games nevertheless. And yeah, I think the Big 12 is a difficult conference to play in, but I do see us being able to really um, be competitive in it. And let's go ahead and hop into the recruiting board here in this first episode. Um, like I said, most of this will be off screen, but I'll show you guys some of the prospects that are interested in us and the team needs I can almost guarantee it's going to say fullback because no rosters include fullbacks so um, we are going to pretty much every year have to get fullbacks if we played any other team so yeah we're going to need two fullbacks three defensive tackles a center a defensive end and a free safety so what I like to do I just go through here um, before I add any other um, talent positions I just go through here and I just scout some of the guys that are interested in us. That way they can get on the board first so we know which guys have the most interest in us. Um, and hopefully we can get some gems early on in this series because, as you can see, two stars are going to be the really big big pieces for us because one stars are going to love us and two stars are going to be like, ah, if we're going anywhere, it's not Kansas. So we're going to really have to fight for all of these talented players that we can even try to get. As you see there, we're not even first on any of those guys' boards. Um, so it's going to be very difficult, obviously, for us to get some recruiting ground going. Um, this guy only has two people on his board. Uh, I'll take that. He is a 66 overall. Hopefully he does not plummet because I would hate... To have a guy like that plummet i missed a couple of guys on there that i would like to add we had a couple three stars that were second 70 overall three star another one and a 63 that's not too bad right there um, i could definitely see us having worse um as we all know though it doesn't really matter what they are going into it it only matters what they are when you scout them so let's head over to the scouting board and see exactly what some of these guys look like. Um, I, ha I always have the worst luck when it comes to scouting anybody and getting gems. Always seems like when I'm trying to rebuild a team, everybody just wants to go down or just stay in the same place. 59 minus 1, that's just not good at all. Minus 3 right there. I have a feeling a lot of these higher overall players, I was wrong there, Michael Hubbard might be a guy to look out for. A lot of these higher overall players go down um, if they're like three and two stars. And you're more likely to get a gem out of a lower start or a lower overall player because the higher overall they are, Kyle Young though, up one at already a 70, which is great to see for us. Um, the lower your overall is, I feel like the more of a chance you have to go up because it almost always seems like um, we didn't have enough points to round out evenly there, unfortunately. It almost always seems like whenever you have a guy that's a 70 overall, he's going to go down. And a guy that's like a 65 overall may go up. So as far as other talent positions go, we do have one running back, Phil Holmes. Might as well scout him. I don't really have a chance to be picky. Pat Campbell, that sounds more like a um, football name if I've ever seen one. Um, we don't really have much option. I am going to go after a guy like Marquez Bryant because depth in the quarterback position. One of our quarterbacks may be leaving us. 
um, due to not getting enough playing time this year. And I'm going to go after a couple of these speed running backs here because, as we all know, speed kills. And Colby Smith, a four-star receiver, has a second overall out of Arizona. I will definitely look into that. And look, just go through right here. And a lot of these guys we may not even end up scouting because we just have too many needs on the team. Um, but I am going to go through and obviously add them and unadd them as the season goes on. And just the guys that were higher on the board for, it'd be dumb not to add. Like this guy, he's a three-star. We're third. Why would we not add him? And let's see if we have any athletes. No, unfortunately, we don't. Um, I don't know who we'd really be able to. Maybe we can get lucky and find one from Kansas. Okay. Four-star athlete out of Kansas, Ken Bryant. I think we can manage um, being able to kind of fight for that guy just simply because he's out of Kansas. So hopefully we're able to um, kind of pull him away from those teams he has higher on his board. All right, well, we haven't really looked at the depth chart itself or the roster itself, and as expected, it's not the most talented of rosters. Quarterback position, we have a little bit of a battle here. We have Jalen Daniels, who is the starter in real life currently. He's a scrambler. He can run around, and his throwing attributes aren't the greatest, obviously. He's only a 72 overall. He's got 85 throw power, which is decent for a sophomore, but only 71 accuracy. And um, Jason Bean, what a great name right there, a junior, 79 and 72. And Miles Kendrick, a senior, 73 and 79. So he can't throw it as far as anybody else. But if we're looking for accuracy, he is the best option. Obviously, we have the two freshmen that we did redshirt. As far as running back goes, Velton Gardner, we can expect to make some big plays for us this year. He's got 90 speed, 94 acceleration. And Devin Neal behind him isn't any slower. 88 and 90, which will only get better as he goes forward. He is a freshman, which is going to be huge for us in the future years of this series. Velton Gardner's a junior, if I didn't say that. As far as receivers go, we have Kwame Lassiter, the second, who is really our best receiver. Unfortunately, he's a senior. But he's got high speed. Um, nothing crazy, but it's good enough to get the job done. And he's got pretty decent catching 77 um, high 70s around the board behind him it's not too much we've got some young players back here um, really just sophomores and freshmen we've got Trevor Wilson a 77 overall um, unfortunately we don't really have the speedster like we I would wish that we have we have some decent tight ends here a couple freshman tight ends that it can get some playing time early on in their career and Mason Fairchild number 89 a junior as far as the offensive line goes it's not as bad as it could be um, most people are in their mid-70s. We do have um, Mike Nowitzki, who is 87 overall, but I wouldn't expect too much out of him because we only have another year or so out of him. Um, defensive line is decent. Senior Kieran Johnson, who is apparently on a hot streak in the preseason, so he must be doing really good in practice. Um, as we know, defensive end is something that we're going to need to replace a lot of talent and experience at. Kieran Johnson's leaving, Zion DeBose is leaving, and Jelani Arnold is leaving. And on the right side, Malcolm Lee, a senior, is leaving. Steven Parker and Caleb Taylor are backups there. Defensive tackle is not horrible. Um, bunch of seniors here. We've got four, four seniors out of five players there, so we have to get a lot of people there. Um, as far as linebacker goes, we've got Nate Betts, who is our impact player out there in the middle of the field. 78 overall. Rich Miller, 76, and Nick Channel, 72. Gavin Potter at the middle linebacker, junior. Might as well give him the playing time over Jay Deneen, who's a senior. Unfortunately, they didn't have like advanced red shirts in this year yet. Um, no injury red shirts, no uh, well, medical red shirts, nothing like that. Um, as far as cornerback goes, we have a lot to be desired there. That's why I put a couple guys on the board. Um, we do have freshman Jacoby Bryant, who's already a 70 over, 75 overall, and Romello Dotson, a 74 overall freshman, which is pretty nice to see. And Deuce Mayberry, what a great name there. Um, Ricky Thomas Jr., 79 overall. Nothing too great behind him there. And Kenny Logan Jr., 81 overall, strong safety junior. 
he is probably going to be that leader in our secondary right there. Kickers, decent. Jacob Borsilla and Reese Vernon, I believe is how you pronounce that, is the punter. He is a sophomore. Kick returner, we are going to have Lassiter returning. I wouldn't be... Um, Apparently, Jason Bean would be our third or fourth best return man. I'm not going to go with that. I would not be opposed to getting Devin Neal some minutes there trying to return kicks and stuff simply because he's got high acceleration, and I do think that'll get him somewhere. So I'd like to get the guy. If he's not going to be on the field as a starting running back, I want to get him some playing time in some way, shape, or form. Um, kickoff specialist, just the kicker. And that is about it for the roster. Um, now, I do want to... Unfortunately, in NCAA, obviously, you don't get a preseason. So I was going to go in to practice and get a couple guys some snaps and just see how they play around with um, with this team around them. I wanted to see how the quarterbacks do. I was going to give them each about five passes to ten passes each on various different plays so let's get into that practice now and i'll see you guys when i'm set up with the first quarterback so first up here we have jalen daniels the sophomore quarterback number six as we established he is a pretty mobile guy um he kind of doesn't really have the best throwing statistics so i just wanted to come out here and see how he could do i know he's pretty fast so throwing on the run would be interesting. That is a bad pass right there. Um, this team definitely has a lot to work on. As you see, a nice pass there and a great catch by Lassiter. I think we can get something going on this offensive side of the ball. And we just need to see how good of a player... I had a guy wide open there in the back of the end zone. We just need to see how many players we can get to make some plays. They got the seam on this play. And he just doesn't have the arm to get it in there. Um, Daniels is most likely going to be the starting quarterback day one just simply because of his class. He's younger than both of the other guys and the same overall. So I don't see why we wouldn't give him a shot at least. Um, but if we somehow feel like, hey, we might be able to make a bowl game this year and it's not with Jalen Daniels on the field, as a head coach, that is my job to make that decision. And I think it wouldn't be too shocking to pull him maybe halfway through the season if we find ourselves close to a bowl game but struggling to get anything going. Nice little dump-off pass there by him against this scout defense. Um, he's really got to, since our offensive line leaves a lot to be desired, he's got to be able, that was a beautiful pass there to Fairchild, though, by Daniels. He's got to learn how to throw on the run a lot more efficiently. Because as you can see, they that like that throw was horrible. I mean, he's falling backwards. He's throwing back across his body. There's not much else you could expect from him. And this offensive line isn't going to be able to protect him for as long as he would hope as other quarterbacks get. So we are going to see how Jason Bean can do coming in here. He's fast too, so don't um, count him out of the rotation. First play, though, a sack. I just feel like as the head coach of this Kansas Jayhawks team, two sacks in a row for Jason Bean. Not looking too good there in the practice mode. As the head coach of this team, I feel like this team just has morale behind Jalen Daniels. And I'd be stupid not to start him early in the season at least and see how we can do. Lasseter drops an almost very impressive catch. Um, but we might be able to get a couple passes in for Bean if we ever dominate any teams. Um, the only game I could really think that would happen is FCS Midwest, which is the second game of the season. So we'll have to see how the season ends up going in that perspective. Um, Fairchild back-to-back -back big catches down that seam. Um, and being just poor field awareness right there, just runs straight into his offensive lineman. And let's see how good he can roll out here. Throwing the run. Ugly 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 throw right there and he's getting pressured and he's going down um yeah let's go ahead and hop out to our last quarterback who's going to get some reps in practice unfortunately you can't practice with the um i don't think yeah you can't practice with red-shirted players which is kind of stupid um as i've 
I've always thought that the reason they're red-shirted, why is Bean still in here? We may have to start Jason Bean just because of his name. But I've always felt like the red-shirted players should be able to practice still. I mean, they can in real life. And I don't really understand why they can't in the game. But that's neither here nor here. Um, here's the senior, though, Kendrick. And a pretty decent throw there. As we established, though, he doesn't have the great arm strength of the other quarterbacks. You can see right there, he just he didn't have the zip on that pass. See if he can fit that in there. Beautiful catch by Grimm. A one-handed catch. That was a nice one if I've ever seen one. And let's see if he can throw that. Most likely, this guy is not going to see the field unless an injury happens. He's the slowest of all the quarterbacks. And he just doesn't, he's a senior, so there's really no point in starting him if we're even, if we're going to lose. Because he's not going to be back next year to help us out even more if he develops. So these reps are really just to get him prepared for backup minutes and see if he can um, be a serviceable backup this year. And let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Are you guys looking forward to this series? I know I am looking forward to it a lot. Um... Who do you guys think we should start this year? Should it be Jason Bean? Should it be Jalen Daniels? Let me know. I'm leaning towards Daniels, but make sure to comment down below what you guys think. Look out for episode one, or I guess technically episode two. This will be episode zero or something. Um, look out for that episode within the next week or so where we play face off against the Charlotte 49ers. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and Adios.